Hey everyone, one year ago, I hung a raw pork leg up in the garage and then later in the basement to try to make it into prosciutto. Now that process is done and I'm going to open it up and we are going to see what we've got. So in this bag is the pork leg that I hung up to try to make it into prosciutto. Originally, I was only going to hang it up for eight months. I ended up hanging it up for about 12 months. Now that's absolutely fine. Eight months is actually kind of on the short end for prosciutto. Usually my understanding is that prosciutto is hung for somewhere between six and 24 months. So this wasn't ever a really long cure. Now this pork leg has been hung in a porous canvas bag to allow plenty of airflow. And first it was hung in the garage for several months, and then it was hung in the basement for several months. And for the whole time, the ambient temperature there has probably been, uh, say, somewhere around 60 degrees Fahrenheit. One of the things that I did in the meantime, and I mentioned this in the video about botulism that I'll link to up here in case you haven't already seen it, one of the things that I did during those several months was I actually, it seemed to be drying out too fast, so what I did was I dunked it in a bucket of water for around 24 hours to try to re-moisten it up and help it to dry out a little bit more slowly. Now there's one other very important fact about the last 12 months, and it is that this has been hung in an extremely dry environment. And so that leads me to my prediction about what I'm going to find when I open this. I actually believe that when I open this, I'm not going to find prosciutto at all. What I'm going to find instead, I think, is I'm going to find pork jerky. That is, I'm going to find pork that has just been absolutely dried into oblivion. It's going to be kind of tough. It's going to be chewy. It's going to be dry. That's my belief anyway. Now, real prosciutto that is cured properly in a more humid environment uh, actually dries out a lot more slowly, and when you cut it open, it's just incredibly moist in the middle. It's wonderful. If you've never had prosciutto, I recommend you go find some and try it out. Now, if my prediction is correct, and this is not in fact prosciutto at all, but is instead just very dried for 12 months pork jerky, well, guess what? That's actually not the end of the world. I've got pork jerky. So without further ado, let's take a look at this thing. Wow, was I over-optimistic or what? Let me show you what really happened. Now, nothing seemed obviously off as I took it out of the bag. My first clue that something might be wrong is that, as I expected, the pork leg was pretty tough and hard to the touch. But I thought, you know, that's okay. I've already decided that it might not have perfect texture. If it's pork jerky, that's acceptable. Where things really started to go south was when I tried to cut it. Now, prosciutto is supposed to cut very easily, like this. What I got was this. As you can see, my prosciutto, if it can be called that, is quite a bit tougher. I tried a couple of different knives, but nothing really worked. I can kind of cut it with a knife, but that could take all day, not to mention that it's kind of dangerous to force a cut with a knife. The only good news at this point was that the inside of the meat did have a reddish tint from the curing salts, and that gave me hope that yes, I do in fact have something edible here, it did cure properly, I just have to find a creative way to cut it to get inside. So naturally I decided to cut it with a bandsaw. Now this sounds crazy, but it's actually much safer than straining at it with a knife. And let's face it, this isn't even the weirdest thing you've seen on this channel, we threshed wild rye in a leaf shredder. Still, this was pretty weird. The real problem, though, was that the bones are still in the pork leg, and given that the flesh was about as tough and hard as the bones, it was actually kind of tricky to figure out where to cut without getting a chunk of the bone. The good news at this point is that the farther I cut into the pork leg, the softer it got. Although I never got to that perfect silky smooth texture that prosciutto should have, it did get a little better. And I tasted some, and it was pretty good. Not as good as some prosciutto I've had, but it was definitely edible. Still, I've got the overall problem of how to remove the meat from the bone, including the outside layer that I'm going to cook. Eventually I decided that since I couldn't cut it off the bone, I'd have to try to cook it off to soften it and get it to separate. And at this point I recognized that most of this was never going to be eaten raw the way prosciutto really should be, and in this sense, this was something of a failure, but at least I could experiment and get some more information. So I cooked the prosciutto. At least it came off the bone easily afterwards. Okay, so where does this leave us? Well, here's my best guess. If you're making prosciutto or a similar project, you have two variables that you need to manage for the highest possible quality. One is time, the other is humidity. Remember, 
Prosciutto were often hung up for two years. The reason why they don't dry out as much as mine did is because the ambient humidity is kept very high, and that allows it to dry out, but to dry out slowly. Alternatively, you could hang it for a very short time in a dry climate, and it would significantly lower the quality of the prosciutto since the flavors don't have as much time to develop, but in theory, it should still work and have something approximating the correct texture. So what I should have done is hang it for only a month or two in my dry climate, or else I should have built a curing chamber where I could keep the humidity high and slow the drying process down. A couple of other tricks I could have used is a shorter salt pack cure at the beginning. I think this took too much moisture out just by itself. And then you can also coat the prosciutto in lard, which is another common trick to slow down the drying process, especially on the outer layers of the pork leg. You can't always be successful on your first try, but you can at least learn from what you've done. I wasn't that far away from a good result, and I'll definitely be coming back to this project. I would like to build a curing chamber and try this again, and I'd also like to try doing a much shorter cure in dry air to see just how much you can get away with and still have something that is reasonably good. I feel kind of bad that after all the hype and all the weight, I didn't really get the result I wanted, especially to show all of you. But hopefully at least this is some good information and helpful information in case any of you want to try something like this. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.